everyone, it is Shipwreck Smith here, and today I'm going to be doing something different, and I'm going to be painting a traditional art piece. Recently, I have really gotten into watercolors, and so I thought it would be fun to do a video, just kind of a laid-back video of me painting this watercolor piece. And uh, this is a previous one I did, and I thought about turning these into a series of like royal princesses with different hair colors and so this is the purple one and I'm going to be doing the blue one now and I am using the Strathmore watercolor paper which is great but I just wanted to do more of a chill video with you guys today because I really enjoy the videos that I see people do um, like drawing with waffles or doodle date which they kind of do the live video drawings instead of a speed paint where I'm actually talking to you guys while I paint instead of doing a voiceover later. So if you want, you can just join in with me and we can paint together. I cleaned my studio that I haven't used in a while and I just thought that I kind of wanted to create a traditional art piece because it had been so long since I did traditional art. And that's kind of how this came about. Whoa, wait, oh, look at that. This, oh, you can put the cap on the end of this. I didn't know that! That's awesome! <laughs> um, and I also didn't mention the brush that I'm using. It's, uh, uh, I'm getting distracted. Where's my sample paper? So this brush that I'm using in a, is an aquash water brush that is way too orange. Um, and I just, I wanted to try out watercolors and I had been seeing a lot of artists using this, this brush and I thought, hey, that looks pretty cool. I want to try that. And this thing has changed the way I paint. I'm finding it kind of difficult to talk and paint at the same time. Oh no, that's way too much red. Shoot. Okay, let's try this color. Oh no. That's a skin tone. Oh, am I getting it on the paper? What am I doing? Oh man, I didn't even add that much water. Man, what? Ah, okay, we're back. That's good, that's good. I have this scrap piece of watercolor paper that I use to test out colors before I put it on the paper. I think I want to keep her kind of pale, but I'm going to give her a bit of a, like a orangish skin tone. This previous one here, it's kind of a little more pink because of her hair color is on the purple side, obviously. But because I am doing blue for this hair, I actually originally thought about doing a blue skin tone, like really subtle blue. But because the goal for these paintings, this series that I'm doing is um, that I want to do complementary colors because I did the purple hair and then the yellow complements, I want to do a little bit of an orangish skin tone since that's the complementary color of blue. And of course you guys will be seeing, still be seeing a lot of digital stuff from me. It's just, um, I wanted to play around with some different videos and kind of switch it up a bit give you guys something different to see. The this the purple one that I showed you guys, the purple haired princess, I originally, when I did that, I wasn't intending on doing a series of these and I decided to do a series after I did that, but I decided that it worked because purple is the color of royalty, so she has kind of like a royal crown, and so I th think it fits pretty well, that it doesn't have to look like something purple because it kind of already looks like something that's purple because purple is the color of royalty so it seems fitting. I'm going to leave that skin tone and come back to it later in case I decide to make it darker. So now I'm gonna go to mixing the hair. Okay I think I'm gonna start with this as like a wash and maybe come back with something else. I'm gonna start light and build up. No! Wait! Oh no! It's on the skin. Ah, paper towel, paper towel. Okay, I think we're safe. I just used a, like a generic fine tip for the line art. It's just this like a scrapbooking line pen thing. I don't really have any nice fine tip pens, but I actually am really liking how this blue looks. So I think I'll stick with this blue and just add some layers to make it darker. But if you guys have any recommendations for me, I'd be happy to hear it. Because, like I said, I'm still trying to learn. Oh, I got outside the lines again! Ah, okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this drawing is actually already on in my Redbubble shop, if you guys want to go check that out and get this as a sticker or something. Um, so, there's that little plug. I'm kind of lazy when it comes from staying in the lines, apparently. Ah, oh, come on. But the nice thing is, when I went to go put the other painting up on my red bubble, I just kind of 
took it into my drawing program and tweaked up and cleaned up the edges a bit because I'm all sneaky like that. <laughs> Ooh, I am super happy with that hair color. I'm definitely gonna stick with that and just make it darker. But I think while this blue is on my brush, I'm going to kind of shade in these pearls with the same same shade. I think I probably in editing I'm gonna realize just how much calmer I sound when I try to talk while I paint because I get really relaxed when I'm painting or drawing and I kind of get in a zone and so I probably I might I think I might end up sounding different because you know with my digital drawings I don't talk while I draw I do the the talking parts afterwards, um, especially when I'm doing talking about a specific topic, and so I think this is gonna be quite a different vibe to this format. And I hope that looks like a crown. I did some some of those tall, twisty shells to do the crown with because it looked more of like a natural look and not quite as a in-your-face royalty look. Oh, again, again. Really? I feel like I'm just kind of like talking through the process that I normally think in my head, but right now I'm thinking it out loud. Oh, and I should probably explain why you see all these boxes. That's because um, I'm filming this on my iPad. I have it pro propped up on like a huge stack of boxes. See, I, the reason I didn't like watercolors for so long is I didn't know how bright you could get colors. And I would totally buy this watercolor set again if I knew where it came from, but I don't. And it's bothering me because there's no name on this set. There's nothing that has a brand or anything. And I'm like, please tell me what, where did you come from? So if anyone knows what this watercolor set is, please tell me. I'm not even, I haven't even finished coloring the rest of this. I'm just like, I wanna shade hair because I like shading hair. My family has asked me before, like, how do you decide where the shading goes? And I don't have a specific answer. It's mostly just I've spent so much time observing in real life and photos that it just kind of becomes natural that I decide where the shading goes and it just becomes second nature on where I put things. A lot of watercolors I saw, like watercolor paintings I saw when I was younger, mostly involved desaturated, super blended, like landscapes and things like that. And I'd always look at those and be like, eh, that's just not something I would do. I mean, I thought it looked nice, but I didn't like the style. It's never something I gravitated towards. And so I never really pursued watercolor because I was like, you can't control it and you can't fix your mistakes. And it's like, I never liked that until I learned really, you really can fix mistakes. I already have fixed several. It's just you have to be careful because once it dries, you commit to it. That's really the only difference because with acrylics, you can paint over something no matter what because of how opaque it is. But because it's a this is a transparent medium, you can't go back over an area and completely cover something up. But that really just isn't a problem if you really plan out what you're doing. So I tried to put a light really close to the painting, but then it made all of the colors look weird. But the different the problem here is it doesn't look very saturated let me try adding more light i'm not really sure if this is better but we'll try this i want it to be light i don't want to go too crazy with these shells because i don't think these shells usually are very dark colors i probably should have looked up reference but we're doing this now and i think the skin will look better once i add some shading to it so i'm going to use oh shoot Hope that didn't mess anything up. Um, it's hard to keep everything in frame and I forget that sometimes I'm not in frame. I don't think about that kind of thing because usually with digital art, it's on screen that I can move anywhere I want. Probably should have checked to make sure the hair is dry before doing this, but you know what? We're committing now. Yeah, this, this is good. This will look good together. It's all about trying to make everything look like it belongs together and I have a lot of fun playing around with colors and I've been trying to do better with color theory lately and I like to add a bit of a wash underneath the eyes. This eye is going to be a bit lighter. I'm also really enjoying just kind of doing paintings that are kind of my own and my own characters. I've been doing a bit of fan art lately and Though I've always expressed that I will never sell fan art, I do still 
do it sometimes because you guys enjoy seeing it even though I'm I make an effort to never actually sell my fan art. It's nice to make original stuff that I can enjoy and be like, hey, I made that. When it comes to shading, if someone, people ask me like how to shade and stuff, I, where there isn't an element of I improvise because I already understand where it goes, it's also really good to understand anatomy when it comes to shading and where to put things like I wanted to accentuate a bit of a cheekbone which is why I did that little bit of shading there and so there's still a purpose to what I'm doing sometimes it's a little more improvised and sometimes it's like I meant to do that because I want to show and accentuate parts of actual anatomy and if this is a type of video you guys want to see more of be sure to let me know these take a little more time to do but I really do enjoy them, so if you guys do too, I'd be willing to make more of these videos. And maybe maybe just not quite as often as I do digital art, and I still do both. And you'll definitely still be di seeing digital art on this account. I jump around colors a lot. Like, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna use this skin tone to actually shade in these shells. Alright, now that the hair is dry, I'm gonna do some more shading. I did not clean this brush enough, shoot! I really like how this darker color is looking. And something I really like is how nice it is that you can layer these colors. I'm really enjoying layering them up because I've incorporated a lot of knowledge of digital art into these traditional paintings. Just like I use layers in digital art, I'm using layers traditionally too. It's just a little bit different. And as long as I view it the same way I do digital art with the layers and apply that to traditional, I can get some pretty cool effects. Okay, and one more thing I like to do with the hair is to shade around each of these lines. I'm not sure why I do this, but it really makes the whole thing pop. I'm gonna add a bit of blush. I think she needs a little more color. Now I've discovered the way I like to do blush is I lay it on really thick and I dab it away immediately and it makes a nice little gradient thing. I'm gonna start with a light wash of this and go back with a color that's a little more orange since I've already committed to this yellowish color. There we go, that's what I want. Now I'm gonna add a bit of orange around the edge of the hair to kind of make it look like it fits in with the background. But the one thing that is kind of bothering me is that the shells don't stand out from the background. And then maybe add a little green to the hair to not make it like a perfect blue, but add a little more color. I think adding that green definitely helps and it gave me an idea for these shells. I think if I just shade it in blue, it'll make it look like it ties together a little more. Sometimes you gotta get a little creative with the methods you use for shading. You don't have to use the darker color of something to shade it in. The last thing I think that might make this help is making this the crown a little more vibrant with a wash of yellow. Yeah, this is going to help a lot. Just making this more vibrant I think is going to make a big difference. Yeah, I thinking I thinking. I'm thinking that adding that that yellow really made a huge difference in making this work. I've accidentally discovered something that makes a lot of sense in that it's when you shade blue with orange, it actually comes out green anyway. So I think I made a good choice on using green as my third color to match everything. Well, it looks like I am done with this. So I'm going to initial it and that looks like we are done with this painting. So thank you guys so much for watching. And again, let me know if this is something you guys want to see more of. If this is something you guys want to see more of, um, I might film the rest of this series as I continue these paintings. And again, you guys can always keep up with my work in progresses on Instagram. And if you're new around here, don't forget to join my pirate crew by hitting subscribe down below where we have new videos here every Friday and Sunday. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to comment down below and let me know what you think. And I will see you guys in the next video.